I was having a lot to drink. So sometime, like maybe past 11 or so, MC Galaxy calls me up and he's like, ah, ah, babe, we don't do the first round. We don't see you. What's so we're like, oh, okay. Oh, right. You're still doing Freaky Friday. Yeah, call me. I'm logging in. <laughs> and so um, the rest is history. I have never you seen know, someone who goes like We're very good friends, and not only that, his uh, song "Fine Girl" was uh, one of the soundtracks for my movie "The Washerman," and uh, he also did a freestyle for me while the marketing of um, "The Washerman" was ongoing. So yes, I would say we're friends and colleagues. So MC Galaxy's Freaky Friday started from my page. Yeah. One evening, I was doing my own personal live on my own page, okay. and MC Galaxy called in. And um, so, for some reason, I was just, you know, playing. We were playing together, and um, I showed my legs. I'm like, oh, I love my legs. So beautiful legs, you know. And, and then people just started to, you know, commenting, you know, when you're watching it live, oh, we need more, show us more, show us more. And we're like, nah, you know, so it was just um, all jokes. And then people were coming on, people were calling their brothers and their cousins. And then the people were just coming, coming, like there were like thousands of people that day on my own um, live. Okay. And so after that call, MC Galaxy called me and it's like, ah, ah. That he didn't know that people like those kind of things. That he's going to start Freaky Friday on his page. He's going to do, you know, something like that and make tell people to, you know, uh, be, you know, freaky, freaky <laughs> on his page. I'm like, oh, okay, oh, wow, really? Oh, wow, wow, you know, okay, nice, all right, go ahead and, you know, and true to the whole phone call, you know, I saw on his page. He's starting this Freaky Friday. The first he was like, oh, guys, should we do Freaky Friday? What time should we make it? You know, normal, normal level. And um, so his Freaky Friday started. The first Freaky Friday he had, um, I don't know, was that day? I think I missed it. I don't know. But by the next day, apparently someone had gone beyond, you know, showing of leg to actually showing the real thing. And it was a problem. So we talked about it like, ah, ah. Wow, people they go far like this. Are you serious? Why, why, why? We talked about it casually. And then on that Friday, that very Friday, he called me in the afternoon and he's like, he's doing another freaky Friday. And I'm like, yo, up on the wall away, you enter the first time. You're still doing another freaky Friday. He's like, yeah, he's doing another one. He's doing another one. Like, ah, let's do freaky Friday. So I'm like, yo, I'm going to be there. We're going to scatter our place. But the original plan was, you know, what I usually do, my capacity. My capability, I go do leg, which is regular. We all wear bomb shorts. Eh? I will do leg, form, 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 showing leg. And then when everybody's saying, yo, go, go ahead, go ahead, do more, do more. I will come cotton. That was the original plan. <laughs> but ladies and gentlemen, <sighs> throughout that day, do you know, I'd even forgotten by 11 o'clock i don't forget say there was anything like freaky friday i was dealing with my personal challenges my personal things i had so many things i was dealing with at that time on that day so i was um i was having a lot to drink i was having some i i had some so sometime like maybe past 11 or so mc galaxy calls me up and he's like ah, ah babe we don't do the first round we don't see you What's so we're like, oh okay oh right you're still doing freaky friday yeah, call me. I'm logging in. <laughs> and so um, the rest is history. So I don't even know how that went out. So even after the call, even after the Freaky Friday thing, after somebody was behaving like a mad person, that I didn't even know anything had happened. So the call ended. I think network, thank God for network. It ended and I was still regular, just there. People started calling me. I'm like, well, why are you calling me? What happened? <laughs> I said, what, what is the problem? Do you know I played with a dog that day? I don't, I'm scared of, you know, those small, small dogs I have for, I'm scared of them. Those ones that they don't even bite anybody. But I played with a regular dog, big dog. <laughs> and let's not go into too many details. Uh, so, blah, blah, blah. Long story short, I saw myself, which I couldn't even really see understand at that point. 
then I started driving to find help. Now, when you are high, your mind is talking to you. Your mind is telling you, do this. Enter your car. Drive to the mainland. Go and look for PR help. That was someone that will help you. So I'm driving. I don't even know where exactly I'm going. Something just telling me, turn right, turn left. I'm just going until I hear a very big <laughs> My tire bust, my car. I don't even, to tomorrow, I don't even know how it's going to happen, Sha. But I know I packed. When the thing happened, I didn't drive again, of course. <laughs> the car was never moving again. I just stayed there and people came to, people who had been calling, who had been talking to, they came and, you know, took me to Toyin's house, some, um, my colleague's house. And it was until the next morning that I saw the video. I didn't even know what happened until the next morning <laughs> when I woke up. <laughs> I was like, <sighs> then my parents, my mom called. When I saw my mom's call, see. When I saw my mom, my, my, my mom's call, yeah. I felt my spirit leaving my body. I could, I could feel my, I was dead. I could feel my spirit going because I, it, there's not like the coincidence was just too, too much. Why would my mother just call? It, of course she had seen it, you know. Of course, of course, and it wasn't funny. It wasn't funny, yeah. But it was like my life had ended, you know. It was like, it was like, I was dead. I felt like, I felt like, like I was dead, basically. But my mom wasn't so terrible. I think she knew. I think people had called her, like Charles Wabai, who's also friends with my family. They had, uh, and Judith Audu. I think they, they had talked before I was sober. So she pretended like it was okay. My daughter, just come home. <laughs> you know how African parents tell you, we just want to talk. <laughs> My daughter is okay. Just come home. <laughs> it wasn't really funny. Okay, because um, my parents are pastors, by the way. So, and they have a ministry. <laughs> so, it's like, how would the congregation listen to their message when their child is um, on the hip-hop? When their child is you know like this but to cut the long story short i got home there were fastings and prayers and series of counseling and in all of that i came to realize from my mom from my dad that while they're not really happy about it i'm still human and christ didn't come for the perfect people but for people who are not perfect, they, they didn't make me want to kill myself. They didn't make me feel like I was really, really dead. I mean, my mom will not even hear that statement from my mouth. She will beat me up if I... Yes, they still beat me up at my age, you know, and size. So my parents encouraged me, of course, not to drink or to do such things, but encouraged me that whatever has happened has happened and we only can move on move forward from that point and uh, I want to work as hard as I can to win the trust of my fans, my friends, my family members again, people who are so concerned about this, who are concerned about me, uh, who I may have you know, let down one way or the other. The youths who looked up to me before now, you know, I just want to say that we all have our times of weakness. I mean, this was such a time. It's so unfortunate that it was broadcasted live and it, ha it uh, received such a massive, uh, sorry, it received such a massive viewership. My low times, my weakness was, you know, broadcasted. You know, in my time of insecurity, my time of low, the whole world had to see it, had to watch it. And, um, most times, people have these moments in private, you know, people, it's usually, this is a very private thing that I don't even know. I can't, I can't really say anything about the person who sent the video to Instablog. I can't say much or how it got there and who posted it. Those things are private things, you know, your weakness should be 
covered but unfortunately for me i um i happen to be out there and uh, the people who are judging at the moment i don't really blame you guys it's fine because i put myself in the spot and i take full responsibility for the incidents and um, i should have been more responsible i should have been more careful with, with alcohol with expressing myself with whatever it is i uh, i want to do you know so it was yeah all we have to do now is ask god god for forgiveness and to move on <coughs> First of all, we humans fight a lot of battles daily. We are constantly fighting one thing or the other. You know, being a public figure makes it look like, you know, you shouldn't have challenges. You should always work for the people. You know, you set your life down, you sacrifice your life, your maybe your happiness, your comfort to make other people entertained to heal other people and sometimes you you know fail to realize that you have to at some point pause and take care of yourself and all so i can't say oh this is the particular thing i was dealing with but it's just personal issues which which come at us you know once in a while um i was just unfortunate to have my phone with me while i was um drinking um so while people sort out their selves you know they handle their issues with prayers you know you're trying to you're not happy you're feeling down at some point you're under so much pressure you pray and it works for you mm -hmm. sometimes you talk to someone and that works some other people handle it in some other ways that may not really be approved by the society you know some other people just take a tot just you know drink a bit and they feel lighter they can sleep okay. about it which is not exactly the way you should handle your situations yeah. you know so sometimes um in just handling some things you want to just i drank a little but then sometimes you, you you just keep drinking and you don't know that you've exceeded your limits. The natural next step to is to sleep, you know. And but I didn't sleep, mm -hmm. so. <laughs> Before the incident, I was already popular, yeah. <laughs> and exactly. you know, so I don't need or I did not need such to be popular okay. never I believe in work I believe in talent I believe in sustainable popularity I believe in success rather than just fame I believe in value than rather than just famous okay. now some people are very popular but they are not relevant so I would not do something that would make me popular and irrelevant and <sighs> no, definitely not. You know, it's that's not possible. My 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 goal in life is to make people happy. My goal in life is to entertain people. My goal in life is to change the narrative of the Nigerian film industry. I don't I growing up I never liked it when people say, mm, Nigerian film. So that's why I'm here. I'm not here to be popular. Eventually, I'm going to fall behind the camera. I'm not even going to be an actor for too long. I'm already producing. Mm -hmm. At some point, I'm going to direct. So that's not me trying to be... Directors are not exactly famous. They're not exactly... They're here for the art. They're here for... They're, they're creatives. And if you can tell from my skits, from the, the content I put out, I'm not trying to be famous. I'm trying to interact. I'm trying to be friends with everybody i'm just happy go lucky so um i don't think you know popularity from nudity is the kind of popularity i want popularity from from a job well done 
is the kind of popularity I want. And then not just popularity, but value. Adding value to the society, making a difference in my industry, in the world, in my family. That's what I'm all about. And that's why prior to now, okay. I was running a campaign. I'm still running a campaign against um, um, immigration malpractice. People who really know me, who have followed my work, can attest to the fact that I'm... Um, I, I campaign against um, immigration malpractice, especially in Edo State and human trafficking. Yeah. You know, um, ap apart from that, the project I'm working on right now, Charlie Charlie, is a movie that creates awareness both to the illiterate moms who are in the big villages of Benin City and people all over Nigeria um, to create awareness against you know, human trafficking, child trafficking, child pornography, and, um, and yeah, immigration malpractice. And it's uh, in partnership with NAPTIP, mm -hmm. you know, this movie. We're shooting it in three different countries, Nigeria, Ghana, and Italy. So, that, so you can imagine the coincidence now. I'm working on a project about it, working against such things, and then someone tells me I'm doing the same thing because I want to be relevant. No, I want to be re relevant because I saved a lot, of, um, a lot of girls. I brought a lot of girls out of the streets. I gave them hope. I gave them work. Okay. You know, that kind of thing. Not, not this. The most important thing is moving on. The most important thing is rising above your challenges. Yeah. The most important thing is how do you rise above this? How do you wake up from this? How do you go on? And uh, this is my avenue to reach out to people who have been written off in their own families, in their societies, people who have given up on themselves, okay. maybe even in school. You know, you fail once, twice, three times. You're not passing your jump. And the whole family, when you eat, your father will just look at you. Okay, you can eat, but you cannot pass jump. You cannot pass waek. Some people have committed, su committed suicide because of waek. You know, because they couldn't pass waek. So, not just about nudity now, but whatever, you know, uh, whatever challenge you're going through, whatever thing that's setting you back that you think is bigger than you, that you think you can't be anything, I'm saying you have to move on. Set it aside. Put it off your mind. It has happened. It has happened. I cannot come and kill myself. As funny as that sounds, as casual as that sounds, it's one of your strongest weapons. It's one of my strongest weapons. Now, moving on. I'm going to be announcing very soon. In fact, I'm announcing it already. My um, reality show, which is coming to TV. Yay. Trust me, there's no... Mm. <laughs> my reality show is coming to TV. It's up close and personal with Etio Saidemudia, okay. making you know me a bit more. And um, another project which I'm very passionate about, in fact, is more important than the reality show, is Charlie Charlie Movie. We're shooting it already. Uh, by, by upper week, we should be going to Ghana to continue the shoot. It's a movie that creates an awareness, like I said before, about... Um, immigration malpractice mm -hmm. and human trafficking and then some other little little vices yeah. as well it's some is a movie directed by Charles Wagbai that I'm very 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 passionate about it's a project that I can't wait to you know show the world um, also I'm taking on another project this one has made me so scared over the years you know, but they say if your dreams don't scare you, then it's probably not big enough. So I, I always wanted to do, do a series, a, a TV series about um, Esoe, my alter ego, an Edo girl who's trying to make, uh, make meaning out of life. So it's, it's, a, it's a typical, typical story about this um, regular random Edo girl. I'm all about Edo states. Um, so um, that series is so big. I've been so scared all along, like, ah, I don't want to do, what if I try and I fail, whatever. But at this point, I'm not scared of anything anymore because, I mean, the worst that can happen to me has already happened. So now it's me going ahead without fear, going, you know, going for my passion, going for my dreams, going to work, you know, bringing down these goals and, 
you know, achieving success through my um, hard work. Oh, can I do a nude movie? No, hell no, I can't. You know, the funny thing is, before this thing happened, there was a friend of mine who asked me, like, can you do a nude movie? And I'm like, no. So when he saw this video, he called me. Like, I, we had this conversation. I'm like, you see, you see, that's to show you that. <laughs> Don't be me do this thing. That's to show you that. I can't even, I can't, I, my PA. She called me. She's like, but Ma, when I'm in your room and you don't have clothes on, you're always very uncomfortable. You always shout at me to get out of the room. So I, I know this is not you, chicken. So no, I can't. I'm so I'm a shy person. Forget all my gra gra. Forget all my entertainment. And when they say action, I can act. Naturally, I'm shy. Like this is this is crazy. You have no idea. So no, I cannot. You know, um, I can't. I can't. Okay. As God will have it. This, the video is not even clear. The one on YouTube is not clear. The one everywhere is not even clear. Do you understand me? So why would I not go and carry my stuff now? Go and do a movie that will not be very clear. Then we maybe, maybe, maybe ah. No, I cannot go ah. God will not even allow that to happen.